Salutations everyone, hi there, I'm Mark Absalon and welcome to this edition of Mark Absalon's Video Tips and Tricks. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the Sony Vegas Pro 9's trimmer. We've talked about the media pool in our last episode, but this time we're talking about the trimmer. And let me discuss a little bit about Vegas and some other stuff before we actually get into the tutorial. First off, I get a lot of people saying, hey, Vegas, it's an easy program, it's not, you know, Adobe Elements is better. No, it's not. Adobe Elements is like, it's a consumer grade program. Vegas Pro 9 is a professional grade program. Of course, the user interface is simple to use, but the program itself is a very complex. I mean, it's a very diverse, deep program. And a lot of people don't realize this. They just look at this face value, but it is a deep program. And that's what we're doing in this video is making you proficient in everything within the program. Because Vegas Pro 9 is on the same shelf as Premiere Pro CS4, Final Cut, Media Composer, uh, Avid Media Composer. The only difference between Vegas Pro 9 and those programs is those programs are incorporated into a suite. And the suite, uh, they can add special effects and etc. Like for instance, the Adobe products, you've got After Effects, uh, Final Cut uh, Studio uh, Edition, it's got an effects program in there too. Vegas Pro 9 doesn't have that and hopefully they'll resolve that problem pretty soon where the Vegas suite will be offered in this, I mean the Vegas program will be offered in this huge suite that covers everything that you'll need for editing a movie. But if you were to take Final Cut Pro, uh, Premiere Pro, uh, Avid Media Composer, just the the uh, nonlinear editing part of it, and put it on a basis with Vegas Pro 9. It's the same. It's right up there. It's a pro program. Actually, there are elements in Vegas Pro 9 that I think are superior to some of those programs. I mean, I've been using Vegas Pro 9 since when it was just called Vegas a long time ago, and uh, I actually was a uh, Final Cut Pro editor, and I had someone tell me about Vegas and they said hey you need to break out and uh, get back to a Windows based system and check this out so I did I downloaded the trial took a look at it it's a great program it was, did a whole bunch more that Final Cut Pro did not do so don't underestimate this program also guys let's talk about a contest we all want to win cool stuff right well you can win cool stuff on my channel what we're doing is every 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube we are giving away cool stuff to five random subscribers here on the channel. They'll be drawn at random, they'll win really cool things. We're also giving away a cool prize to one of the commenters on one of my videos. Not sure what video it is yet, but uh, I'll choose that later on. And I'm also giving away a cool prize to one of my random MySpace friends. So there are several different ways you can enter this contest. Subscribe to my channel. You can subscribe with all the accounts you have here on YouTube. Add me as a friend on MySpace and comment on my videos and also rate my videos because I want to see what you guys think of what I'm doing. Guys go over to my website too, markapsalon.com and check out my tutorial DVDs. If you got questions or you want something in depth and detailed about chroma key, video lighting, uh, if you bought a new camera and you want to know how to do these cool manual shots, I got DVDs over there that will teach you. And let me tell you, my DVDs are really low priced for the amount of information you get. There are some guys that charge $80 to $100 for the same DVD that I offer for a substantially lower price. And you get the same info. So go over to Mark Absalon, check it out. By purchasing these DVDs, it also helps me make these videos like this on YouTube for free for you guys to watch. Well, let's get started on this tutorial. Let's go up to File, we'll click File and New, and we want save changes on that, and we're going to do a template here, HDV 720 uh, 24 frames a second. And you don't have to use the same type of file that I'm using for this. You can use another clip to follow along. 
And like I said, what we're going to be talking about is the Tremor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new media bin here. I'm going to use a spare change clip and uh, set that and we'll go to our Explorer and we'll right click on that. We're going to add it to the project media list. Now the Tremor in Vegas is for trimming your clips, creating a sub clip, marking a clip with a marker, uh, regionalizing a clip for the multicam uh, b-roll stuff or something you might need to know where the region is that you're going to be uh, working on and also and you know adding it into your timeline it's the area you want to edit your video because you can't just you know pick your video up drag it down your timeline and edit it there but it makes a big mess and you don't want to do that you want to edit it in your trimmer because once you have it in your trimmer you got it all done you just bring it down in your timeline and place it where you need it and it makes for a nice neat edit well guys we're gonna add this clip right here to the trimmer now I can double click this if you watch my last video I showed you in the preferences under general to make sure you have this double click on media file load in the trimmer and of tracks it's very useful and I recommend doing it uh, if you don't want to do that you can always right click and open in trimmer so I'm gonna double click that and you can see here these are not supposed to be selected. Let me erase these really quick. You can see here that um, my file is here in the trimmer and my peaks have already been built and everything and we're good to go. Well, let's talk about the trimmer. The trimmer itself is kind of different in Vegas 9. It's uh, In Vegas 8, it could be in a tab or you could undock it, but uh, it didn't have some of the, the cool the neater stuff this one does and like I said you can just undock it pull it down off the top uh, change it to whatever size you want but for this tutorial we're gonna keep it up here this button right here will expand it to include the entire dock you might not want to do that but you can if you want to and this button will close it if you click that you close it I've had people freak out and say they can't find anything because it's not there anymore well the first thing you want to do to go look for it is you go to view and you look at your trimmer and you can do this with a shortcut of alt and two two and it'll pop back up let's double click that so it's in there again so that's pretty much the way it is oh over here you're gonna see a drop down menu and this will have every clip that you have brought into the trimmer into it it can be useful if you're if you used part of a, a clip and you need to go back to that clip so you can find it again relatively easy this one right here will sort the history a little bit better the lightning bolt uh, or the sweeper will actually clear or clear the entire trimmer history so it's not there anymore so only do this if you're starting out new and you know you don't need any of those clips anymore in your history and the next button next to that will remove it see there you go that deletes entirely and then the little uh, disk icon will save the markers and regions now you want to if go into the options and preferences and look for for it to be saved automatically it makes it a little easier for you um, this over here is the audio editor I don't have an audio editor but if you did that would take it into the audio part so you can edit it this is for a sub clip uh, if you're creating a sub clip we did that in the last video and this is for the parent media like I said Vegas doesn't you know create a new clip from the sub clip it uses the parent clip to create the sub clip so you don't want to delete the parent clip because you'll delete the sub clip uh, the next button is the show video monitor I have it um, pressed down the reason I have it pressed down is because I like it this way better than the old way if you unclick that it's very reminiscent of Vegas Pro 8 uh, I like it where it looks more like a source window like this this is what the way most nonlinear editing programs have it set up so that's that's kind of what I do um, over here you have the external monitor uh, if you click that down what will happen is your external monitor will show the trimmer a lot of editors including myself have more than one monitor to edit with we'll have two monitors that we use to divide up the program if we need to and then we'll use another monitor for preview to actually see the timeline uh, where we could um, see make sure everything is okay with it if it's in the TV etc before we actually render the file out 
Now the next one is kind of a personal preference. It shows the frames. You can see here on the bottom, let me drag this up a bit, that the frames are fully viewable. Now this is a preference. You can have it that way or not. It's, it's kind of up to you. I'm, I'm leaving it off just because I want to. And uh, down here on the bottom, we've got several buttons and a lot of these look familiar to you. We have a loop playback if you want to do that. That plays from the start. If you click that, it'll play it from the very start of the clip. Um, this plays in the space of wherever the cursor is. This one stops it. This one goes to start. This one goes to end. This one uh, skips back. This one skips forward. And uh, you want to make sure this is enabled to override the timeline, uh, to enable and not enable timeline override. You, you can undo this, but I really recommend it. And then we also have uh, add media from the cursor, uh, add media up to cursor, which we'll go into this a little bit more here in a second, and then fit to fill. These areas over here um, are your time code. This is your time code start. This is your time code end. This is the total length of the selected area. And when I'm talking about selection, I'm talking about the regions, the in and out. That's what this little thing is. And it's pretty easy to do this in the trimmer. You can, like I just did, just select it on the area you want, like this. Or if you know where you want to cut it, you can do an in and it'll select it. And then you can cut it with an O on your keyboard for a short cut, for a short cut, and it will be out. So you have in and out. Um, let's talk about some of the shortcuts within the trimmer because in the timeline there are a lot of shortcuts, and those can also be used in the trimmer too, which I, I really like about it. There's the in and the out, um, what we just did for the the trimmer, but there's also a bunch of other ones that are used in the timeline too. For example, if you just want to play a clip, you hit the space bar and it will play the clip. You hit the space bar again to stop it. The arrow keys, the left and right, will allow the cursor to go forward or backward or expand out the clip to get a cleaner cut or actually reduce the size of the clip. Uh, the, that's the up and down keys. Now one of the features that I really like is the fact that you can use the JKL shortcuts in the trimmer. The JKL is pretty much if you press L wherever you have the cursor it's gonna play it at normal speed. If you press it again it's gonna play it a little faster and then a little faster if you press it again etc etc etc. Now the K is gonna stop it all together. Now if you want the clip the, uh, the cursor to go backwards you can press the J and it will play it backwards for you and then if you press it again it'll speed it up and it'll speed it up and it'll speed it up so that's that's kind of cool too I really like that they that you can use those same uh, same uh, shortcuts inside the trimmer itself now getting back to our regional loop you can double click it and drag it like I said and you can do the I and the O for the N which is really nice and there's also you can place regional loop markers in this and you can also do markers too now the regional loop markers are, are done by selecting R like I've already selected this area here and I've got the cursor on it so if I press R it's gonna go ahead and create a, a saved regional loop there for me and this is very useful for um, I'll show you right here I'll pull it down it's very useful for if you're uh, I guess I should name it now shouldn't I so you can see this let me name this uh, we'll call it a uh, U now you can see here on the timeline that it's listed now these are very useful for if you're doing a multi-cam edit and you need to know where um, where certain things are so you can cut back and forth for your b-roll so it's very useful for that and you can do more than one regional loop like for instance I'll, I'll bring it over here and I'll press R again oh yeah I've got to actually bring this over here there we go it's like that area for the regional loop let me go ahead and press R 
and voila, another one is set. Now this is really good. These are in and out point markers and this will be brought entirely down onto the timeline if you drag this area down. Now that's one of the other cool things about it is that you can do stuff like that in the trimmer and it it works well in the timeline so you can see this for your multicam edit or if something else where you need to to know where regional loops are and like I said you can name these two like for instance we'll name this one some weird of some other name but you can also put markers now a marker isn't an in and out point like the regional um, regional markers are a marker marker is just a point in the video where you leave a comment now to place a marker just press M and it's gonna come up it's gonna be a different color than the uh, the regional markers and we'll call this one job and it's just a point saying hey look this is a point that you might want to pay attention to. You could, you could write out some sort of phrase or something to, to show another editor or maybe yourself if you're doing a long edit. This is where something stops. So once you got everything the way you want it, and you got your region, just double click it. It's going to highlight the entire area, and we're going to bring this part down just by dragging it into the timeline. And I'm going to highlight the whole thing here so you can see all the markers in the regions. And we're going to bring that down into the timeline too. And you can see I got U there. It ends here. Another regional uh, uh, marker loop starts there. It's a saved. And there you go. So this is this is pretty uh, pretty nice to have. Now down here you see these little guys that I was talking about a minute ago. These are called pretty much you add the media from the cursor this of course is the cursor you can move the cursor by dragging it which can sometimes take a long time or you can go down here to this scrub bar and go forward and backward with it this is a rather long clip so it's gonna take a little bit to show but you you get the gist of it well if I press add media from cursor it's going to select all this media right here and put it down on my timeline. You can do this by clicking this button or you can do the shortcut which is A and it'll bring it down. It's kind of messed up because it's on one track but I'm just showing examples here. Now let's say that my cursor is there and I want all the media all the way from this end. Well I want to do add media up to cursor which would be shortcut either you could do this button or the shortcut which is shift and a and it brings it down to the timeline so those are pretty much all the features that are involved in the trimmer and you will use the trimmer all the time believe me because uh, it keeps you from really making the timeline into this huge mess and uh, I don't recommend editing totally on the timeline I recommend I recommend trimming and getting your track on the way that you want it to look here in the trimmer and then bringing it down to the timeline and not trying to edit your track on the timeline itself. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the next one we're going to talk more probably about the timeline itself and give you some more info into that. Well guys, I'm Mark Absalon and you guys have a cool and groovy evening, morning or afternoon whatever it is where you are.